What a Strange Little Cult Written by Linwood Chapter 2 The Honesty, Part 2 Behind a gentle, friendly face, Counselor Sandy Hills worried. She dealt with similar situations. She talked to foals and parents about the long-term effects of childhood injury as traumatic as this. She knew how those foals behaved. Confused, scared, absolutely stiff of unfamiliar environment and new experiences. Clinging to a parent, or in the most unfortunate cases, a legal guardian, like they were the only rock in this terrible storm. At that age, going through something like this stayed with the foal, and that kind of permanent scared any pony. Some days bearing news like that felt impossible. Just the thoughts made her shuffle her wings on her back. The way this foal behaved didn't just make her uncomfortable, it put a small, cold stone of dread in her stomach. This colt did not look scared, confused maybe, but if he was afraid, he was doing a downright professional job of hiding it. He seemed attentive and lucid too, looking to Dr. Horse right in the eye as he spoke. Gabriel, I'd like to meet a very close friend of mine. She's here to help you feel better, okay? Does that sound alright? Good thing that Dr. Horse has a talent for speaking to falls. His tone always sounded so perfectly understanding and kind. Gabriel only nodded, then looked at her and quizzically tilted his head just the tiniest bit. Sandy cleared her throat. Ahem. <clears throat> Hello, Gab, she said. My name is Sandy Hills. I'm a counselor, and it's a pleasure to meet you. She drew the friendliest smile she could manage. Hello, Miss Hills, he said. His voice sounded so small and high, but he spoke calmly and evenly. I'm Gabriel. Oops, was I saying it wrong? Counselor Hills trotted to the side of his bed across from Dr. Horse and drew up the nearby stool, removing her saddlebags and setting them down beside her. How are you, Gabriel? She made extra sure to pronounce the strange-sounding name exactly as he had. If it meant anything to him, she couldn't tell. Are you comfortable? Do you feel any pain? All while she spoke, he kept those deep brown eyes right on hers the whole time. It was unnerving, sure, but Sandy had encountered far worse. He nodded. I'm comfortable. The pain isn't anything I haven't dealt with before. I can handle it. Immediate red flags. Healthy fools of his age needed to be surprised and scared by any kind of pain. She didn't let her worry show, though, keeping them locked away underneath the friendliest, gentlest smile she could muster. They always say smiling keeps your mood up. It's reassuring to hear that. With the greetings out of the way, now it was time to move on to the hard stuff. She stilled herself. Gabriel, I was asked to be here by the staff because you told Dr. Horse that your parents are not around. Is that true? Sandy glimpsed a crack in the cult's calm facade. He swallowed and his eyes darted away for just the barest second. Then he nodded that calm, even nod. Yes, I did. Even though she knew it was foolish, Sandy Hills had hoped that this wouldn't be the case. That this would be just some cult that had royally botched running away and was too embarrassed to say who his parents were. Despite her best efforts, the mare smile became a little sadder. Okay, Gabriel. I'll need to talk to you about some very important things then. She paused. Even in rare cases like this, there was usually somebody familiar with the foal to help them do this next conversation. A legal guardian, a family friend, a family neighbor, anything. She stumbled for a moment. Um, would you like Dr. Host to stay with you while we talk? I know it can be tough, meeting new ponies. I know you don't know him all that well, but... No, it's alright, miss. He shook his head. I'll be okay, Miss Hills. Sandy blinked. Oh, all right. Dr. Horse, Miss Fields, some privacy, please. The two nodded and walked out of the door, carefully closing it behind them. Sussy sun had set and the sky outside was a color of deep water. The only thing illuminating the room was the lamp on the small table next to Gabrielle's hospital bed. It exaggerated shadows on the colt's face and cast long bug forms about the rest of the room. It clashed harshly with its golden light. Gabrielle, Sandy started. I want you to know that I'm here to help you. I only want what's best for you, okay? He nodded. But for me to help you, I need you to tell me the truth, okay? You can tell me anything, even things that other ponies, even adults, have told you to keep secret. Do you understand? Another nod. She looked him in the eye. In the darkened room, his iris has almost disappeared in his eyes. Can you help me by telling the truth, Gabriel? He didn't answer right away, biting his lip instead. 
The way he looked at her made the counselor felt like she was being studied. All right, he eventually said. His voice was low, almost sad. I'll try. I'll do my best to be as understanding as I can. I promise. It was the most importance to help the foal feel as welcome and safe as possible. Anything you tell me can only be between you and me, if that's what you want. And he gave the foal her slyest wink. It can be our little secret. And that's all right. I don't mind you telling the other ponies. Sandy bit her lip. This next part was going to be tough. Gabriel, if your parents aren't around, who takes care of you? He worked his jaw for a moment, looking for all the world like he was working on some prime chewing gum. My older sister used to take care of me, but I've been living without her for a while. The detail caught her off guard somewhat pleasantly. She'd been expecting a short, choppy response. Still, her smile fell a bit. I may have a homeless foal on my hooves. Have you been on your own? No, he said right away. I live with my... friends. His hesitation raised an eyebrow. Are your friends grown-ups? He shrugged. Some of them. Are your friends nice to you, Gabriel? It depends on the friend, he said astutely. Gabriel, if they're not being nice, then I don't think they count as being your friends. And you hand me that. What? Her eyes followed his pointed hoof straight to the cupcake that Pinkie Pie had left at the foot of his bed. The counselor frowned a little. Please? Of course, Gabriel. She reached over to the full-sized cupcake and glanced at its bright red frosting. Welcome to Ponyville. I hope you feel better super duper soon. A red and tiny sugary writing, accompanied by a little heart. Nice work with the details, Miss Pie. She thought as she passed it to the foal, who cut it in his fentlocks. He studied it for a moment, holding it this way and that, perhaps considering how best to begin. He eventually brought it to his mouth with both hooves and took a hesitant bite, chewing thoughtfully. Gabriel, if you don't feel safe or secure answering a question, just say so. We can move on. The last thing I want for you is to feel uncomfortable. Okay? He swallowed. No, it's fine. I know they're not the best friends in the world, but they're the only ones I have. And his face fell just the tiniest bit, in a way that made Sandy want to cry. Or had, I guess. Sandy decided they could follow this topic of conversation some other time. Where are you from, Gabriel? Gabriel moved on to the new topic right away, looking a little relieved. A little town up north called Westfield. Never heard of it. I'll have to look it up. Is that where you and your friends lived? No. We moved around a lot. The situation got more and more concerning with every word that came out of this foal's mouth. A group of ponies that weren't in his family, traveling with multiple adults and other foals, always on the move. It began to paint a very disturbing picture. Gabriel, when you were traveling, were you ever hurt? The foal became very silent. Then when he turned his head, he didn't look at her. He looked right through her, as something only he could see. At that very moment, Sandy realized she had a severely traumatized cult on her hooves. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Of course, that's perfectly fine. Sandy smiled. Would you like it if I asked you more about boring stuff? He shoved the rest of the cupcake in his mouth all at once and nodded, and she chuckled. <laughs> sure thing, Gabriel. Sandy bent down and retrieved a clipboard, pencil, and the form that she'd really hoped she wouldn't have needed. Okay, Gabriel, I need to fill out this very boring grown-up paperwork. Would you be willing to help me? Sure. He managed to say through a mouthful of frosty and cake. She nodded, smiling. Okay, I've already got your name. Mm -hmm. Just need to fill a few things out first. Counselor Hills quickly jotted down her own name, his tribe, colorations, and the roughly sized up his height and weight. Okay, first question is... Age. How old are you, Gabriel? Um... Oh, dear. Gabriel, do you know how old you are? His eyes furrowed and he looked at his hooves, then back at his wings. Nope. The counselor resisted the urge to rub her temples. Well, honey... Do you want me to guess for you? He nodded and she jotted down her best guess. Approximately 10 to 12. Appeared next to the little age bullet. Alright, do you have a cutie mark? The foal blinked and got an odd look on his face and checked under the covers. Nope. Sandy suppressed a chuckle. 
I don't think you would have gotten your special talent by getting brought to the hospital, even if it was by Rainbow Dash. Okay, do you know what your parents' names are? Then you made sure to use are instead of were. Let's not remind him of his loss before he's ready. Amelia and David. More strange names. She raised an eyebrow. Can you tell me your sister's name? Rachel. Gabriel, these names don't sound very pony-like at all. The counselor said as she made her best effort to write them down, Cindy so tended to follow up with a question about whether or not he had been living with people like him, an assumption she'd apparently should not have made, but he beat her to it. That's because they aren't. I see. The picture was shaping up, and Sandy Hills did not like what she saw. Whoever this fool was, wherever he had come from, he had endured a difficult life. By her guess, he had been stolen very young. He had been transported with others his age, likely in a similar situation, and at times he had been hurt by those handling him. It all pointed to one deeply disturbing fate. Fool traffickers. Scum. The lowest of the low. Those who would steal the youngest, most innocent minds of this world and exploit them. To escape from such creatures was a treacherous thing to attempt. No wonder he had been found with half of his side gouged out. Sandy looked down at her clipboard. She pushed the pencil into the paper too hard and its tip had snapped clean off. When she raised her head, she saw the cold giving her a very strange look. Well, Gabriel, she said, I think that's enough questions for now. And, um, well, it's late and you've had an eventful day. I'm sure you would like some sleep. He gave that trademark even nod of his. Yes, I would, Miss Hills. He stowed away her clipboard and now useless pencil. I don't let you have your room to yourself. You're leaving already? That made her stop in her tracks. Um, well, I was going to come visit again first thing tomorrow, Gabrielle, but... He set her saddlebags down. Would you like me to stay with you? Gabriel ducked his head and his eyes flickered to the side. Um, please? Just for a little while? Is he scared to be alone? And he couldn't help but to satisfy her curiosity. You're not unsure about me? Some pony you've just met? I've met a lot of people in my life, Miss Hills. He said, furring his eyebrows a little. Then he noted that he said people instead of ponies. I've gotten pretty good at sizing up folks when I first meet them. You're a good person, Miss Hills. I can tell, and, uh, I don't really like being in hospitals, even when they're as clean as this one. The purest bit of fullhood innocence shone through for just a moment when he said those words. They were astute and honest. It put a real happy smile on Sandy Hill's face. Until she realized, of course, that even when they're as clean as this one, implied her smile became that much more forced. Of course I'll stay, Gabriel. She scooted his stool a bit closer and he settled down, drawing the blankets up to his chin. Then she turned out the lamp with a push of the button at its base, casting the room into a complete peaceful dark. Good night, Miss Hills. Came his calm, tired voice from the darkness. Good night, Gabriel. Princess Celestia's ear twitched towards her private chamber's main door. Hush steps. Another calling from a castle runner, most likely. Her own hoof sprang to life swiping her trashy romance novel off its place atop the textbook-like ledger that a more responsible ruler might have been studying and into her writing desk's bottom right drawer. It slid shut and Celestia's magic winged out not a moment before the door knocker rapped against the door's iron frame. Celestia cleared her throat. Uh -um. Come in. The left door hesitated before swinging open in a smooth arc, revealing the one pony Celestia was positive should not have been present, especially since the night court should have just started. Something is wrong, whispered a voice in the back of her head. A coldness dripped down into her heart, but untold years of practice killed any chance of a change appearing in her face. Sister, Celestia said, with just the right amount of tired in her cheer voice. What a pleasant surprise, though I should ask, won't they be missing you in the throne room? It truly felt nice to see your sister these days, especially with the particular difficulty of the past few months, but the arrival was clearly no social calling. Princess Luna's face showed no hint of what lay behind her little sister's eyes, but dark bags beneath them and the long pause before her response spoke volumes. Celestia, she said with a low voice as she walked into the room. Sister, I have... The massive door swung shut behind her, closing with the bear's cushioned thump. A lance of warrior stabbed into the prince's chest, and she furrowed her brow. Yes, Lulu? She said. Is something wrong? 
Her sister opened her mouth, then closed it, and blankly nodded. She swallowed. Sister. She began again with a voice that had begun to shed its stupor. I'm afraid I bring terrible news. There we go. Another fantastic chapter of oh, definitely one of my top 10 fix. I'm glad to get back on it. Hopefully this week I can keep up this pace. I really hope so, because I would love to at least get a chapter out by the next two weeks of every single series that I have so far. That I'm currently in cycle, of course. That aside, however, what I will always thank, no matter how many times I have to, are my wonderful Patreons. Thank you, my tier one Patreons, Squall Windfeather, Rain Flicker, Starlight Blaze, Stu Hex, and Dreamless Portal. My tier two Patreons, Chase the Master, Sword Brother and Mordred, Nocturne, Solus, RD Bryant, Captain Blue Shadow, HKH4 aka Texture, and the Animated Ghost. And of course, a large thank you to Silent Titan. That aside, however, this has been Firehearth. Have a wonderful day.